Hi, so you've got an asparagus friend and want to learn how to care for it? This video is for you. Although it is known as the asparagus fern, this plant is not a fern and it is actually a close relative to lilies. So if you had problems with ferns and you're trying to stay away from them, don't let the common name fool you, this is not a fern and this may be a very good plant for you. I can tell you for me it has grown really nicely and the new growth is really pretty, I'm gonna show you right here. This plant first grows out a stem from which the small fronds will come out and they will be a little bit lighter and more fragile but they're really pretty. So as I said this one has been growing really nicely for me and I can tell you in my experience the most important thing for healthy growth is light so let's talk about that. Okay you guys so when it comes to light the asparagus cetaceous will love bright indirect sunlight. Now I can tell you that with this one right here I actually have her right in front of a south facing window and she's doing really really well. I can also tell you that my south facing window has some protection against really direct sunlight so this may be helping her get the bright light that it needs but not so direct and intense light. What I would recommend is that you provide lots of bright light and observe your plant. So you can start with bright indirect sunlight this means that your plant is going to be able to see the sky but not not the sun and to do this you can place her close to a window and add some sheer curtains or some barrier between the light and your plant so this could be even trees outside of your window and observe your plant so if you see that the fronts are starting to burn a little bit try to move her a little bit away from the window if you see that your plant doesn't have so much growth maybe try to provide a little bit more light always observe and adjust accordingly but again in my experience this plant has been doing really well in front of a south facing window so I'm gonna keep her there and observe her throughout the summer. If you would like to learn more about light for plants make sure to check out the playlist that I made for you where I talk about window orientation as well as different definitions for light for your plants. But now let's get to humidity. You know this plant is super adaptable. One thing that I have observed though is that it doesn't like to be in dry spaces. This means that you shouldn't put her close to a heating vent where the air is really really dry or if you do have an apartment with dry air you may want to place her on top of a humidity tray or close to a humidifier. In my case as I said I have her right in front of a south facing window on the windowsill and below I have a heating vent. So in the winter when I turn on the heating vents to keep the humidity high I place small pots on the heating vent with water inside them. This water will evaporate with the heat and produce some humidity for my plants. This has proven to be really great for this one so if you do have your plant right on the windowsill above the heating vents. Try this strategy and see how it works for you. Okay now that you know how to provide the right light and humidity for your plant let's talk about water. In terms of water this plant will like the soil to stay moist and dry partially before you water again. So we don't want the soil to dry out completely between waterings and at the same time we want the soil to dry a little bit before we water again. This will help you prevent overwatering. In order to determine what whether my plant needs water or not I check with my finger so I stick my finger inside the soil and I try to feel if the soil is drying out. If I feel that it's drying out I water again. How often you check the soil will depend on many different factors around your plant so for example how much light is your plant receiving as well as how humid or dry the air is and of course the pot that you're using. If you have a terracotta pot the soil will tend to dry out more quickly whereas if you have her in plastic the soil will stay moist for longer periods of time. You can start checking twice a week or every week and see what's the best schedule for you. Now when we water we want to make sure that the soil is evenly moist and for this I've noticed that the bottom watering method is really good because I make sure that the water gets into the roots from below and once I am done I make sure that the water drains down through the drainage holes and this is key if you're starting with your plant I recommend that you get a pot with drainage holes because they're very helpful when preventing overwatering. The last thing that I can say about watering is that depending on where you live in the world the tap water may be too harsh for your plant. For example I live in Berlin and the tap water here is really harsh for my plants so what I do is I always filter the water with this filtering can right here and then use it to water them. If you think tap water may be too hard for your plants you can also collect rainwater or buy the still water but at least in my case filtering the tap water has been enough to keep my plants happy and healthy. The best time to repot your asparagus friend will be in the beginning of the spring because this is the growing season so they will need more space to grow but there are some signs that you can look for just to make sure that your plant needs repotting 
or in case you think that it needs repotting outside of the growing season. For example, does your plant have yellow leaves? Even though you're providing the right amount of sunlight and adequate watering, are the roots growing on top of the potting mix or growing through the drainage holes out of the pot? Are they growing around the potting mix? If you see this with the roots, this is a very good sign that your plant needs repotting. The way that we propagate this plant is really fun. It's actually by division and you get two plants out of one. I actually did it a while ago. So if you would like to watch the video and learn how to propagate yours, make sure to check out the link right here. And I would love to ask you, how do you take care of your asparagus fern? Make sure to share in the comments down below. I can assure you the whole community will appreciate it. And that's including myself because I always learned so much from you guys. So thank you so much for commenting down below. Also, if you would like to support this community and the work that I do here, we do have a Patreon page where we meet every month and we talk about plants and we repot together and we propagate together. So if you would like to join us, make sure to check out this link right here. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Okay, adios. <laughs>